Hello developers. So today we're going to look at installing Heidi SQL and how to use it. Now, Heidi SQL, if you don't remember or you didn't see the previous video, is a simple tool that allows us to connect to multiple different databases, get information about those databases, and use SQL statements to create new databases, set up databases, configure them, etc. So let's get started and see how we're going to go about this process. The first thing you need to do is go to their website and you can either search for it or simply type in HeidiSQL.com and it'll take you to this page. Now you are going to notice there are several big ads across the place. That's because Heidi SQL is free. Now there's a lot of great tools out there that you do have to pay for. I know as students, not everyone has money to pay for tools like that. And so we try to find free tools that are still very good and easy to use. So here's the homepage and you can see from it, it gives you a quick update as to what Heidi is. It has some news and information as well as you can see different installation usage on the right hand side. You can look at a variety of different things, including Interbase, SQLite, Postgres, MS SQL and MySQL all listed here as far as how many users are there. Obviously MySQL has a very large number of users and is very popular also with Heidi SQL. That is part of the reason why we are going to be using that. Now what you probably care about first and foremost is your downloads. If you can just click on the downloads, you notice there's a little drop down. You can click on the installer if you want. This is probably the easiest. Be very careful. Some of these ads are designed to look like it's a download button. It's not. You want to click on where it says installer, in this case, 32 slash 64 bit combined. There's also some nightly updates and stuff. These are a little bit more recent. They might have some potential bug fixes, but they might not be fully tested. I always like to go to the one that's a little bit more stable. They also have portable versions, which means that you can run them off of like a thumb drive or an SD card. You don't have to have it installed on a machine. This is great if you're in a lab computer and you need to have lab access to something. This is a great example. Also, as an open source product, you can download the source code. So all this is just available from the download page. Like I said, I typically just go with the installer. It's just easy and allows me to get moving just that much faster. You have some images that you can also go to and for example, see different things like screenshots of different people doing things and how to do things. For example, how to establish a connection to your database, etc. There's a list here for forums and you can see the most recent items in the forum as well as a way to donate if you do like this. More donations they get, the less ads they have to run. And you're supporting the developer. Always a nice thing to do. Now, when you go through this process of downloading it, you'll notice it actually automatically comes up and downloads for me automatically when I selected that download. That was kind of a nice thing. If I come out here, you're going to notice it gives me my default list here. And if I simply double click on it, it will start to do the install process for me. Now, when I do this, it's going to ask, hey, do I want to allow this to make changes to my system? I'll need to say yes. If you have the portable, it should not do this. Now, I've actually already got this installed, so I'm going to click no because I don't need to worry about installing that. Delete those files because, like I said, I've already got it. And I'm going to switch over to my Heidi SQL. Okay, so here is Heidi SQL up and running. I've already got my MySQL database installed and running. If you don't have it installed and running, you're going to want to install that as well, or one of the other databases that Heidi SQL does support. I do recommend Maria as well. That's an off branch of MySQL, but it was done so it's not under the Oracle control. You can look at the history of that on your own if you're interested. Now over here, I have connected to the MySQL localhost. And the way I did that is I created a session. I specified my local host name, which is 127.0.0.1. That's localhost. For those of you who are not familiar, that's your local machine. And then it's looking for the right port by default 3306, which is what MySQL runs on. 
So this already does this. I can have it prompt for credentials if I want to, or I can use Windows authentication, or I can just leave it blank and just have it try to do the default route. Because this is a simple, very simple dev environment, uh, I don't have strong encryption on this particular database. I would never set up my database in a production environment like this. I would always have strong encryption, strong passwords, and even try to use something other than root as my username. So they have to guess two things instead of just the password. Just kind of keep that in mind when you're setting up your own database. Like I said, for this, I'm not worried about it because it's just a dev environment. Because I set up this local connection, it now sees all my different databases under this single database instance. That's right, every database can actually have different databases underneath it. So the database is a server that says, hey, here's a group of files, and how am I gonna organize them? How am I gonna interlink them? How am I going to allow them to be sorted and searched quickly and easily? And that's essentially what your database application does. In this case, MySQL. IDSQL is just showing all these different databases. Now you can see I've got several and some of them are for other projects that I've set up and done. So for example, I have here one called SC Waterfalls. You notice this is a WordPress demo site that I created. So I could just do some testing and demo work on my local machine, as is things like showcases to go. And you notice that, wait a second, how come one has a lot more tables than the other, even though they're both WordPress? Well, that's got to deal with different plugins and different themes and stuff like that. We don't need to worry about that. All we need to know is that, hey, our database can be pretty complicated, have lots and lots of tables, and MySQL is great for that. Or it can be very simple, and I had one here. It was done for Memorial. I was just tracking some messages that people were putting in, so I could organize them and group them together a little bit nicer. You see it's a single table, not very big. This was just a demo thing that I created and I then posted out live afterwards once I got it right and working. So it's very small here. The one on the live on the website was much larger. Now, if I want to dig in and get a little bit more information about this, I can come over here, for example, to categories. And if I double click on it, now it's going to give me information about this table. And this is a nice thing with Heidi SQL is it automatically does this. I can see my different field names, what data type they are, how big they are, if they're allowed to be unsigned, if they're allowed to have null values, etc. So I can see a lot of this information is all set in here by default. I have information in here about my average row length, if it's available to me, what type of database it is, and what the engine is being used. Yes, I'm using MySQL. MySQL actually has different database engines and different language support. So it lets me see that here. I have a tab here for my indexes. Right now I only have one, the primary key. I don't have any foreign keys with this. You might say, well, well, that's nice, but what happens if I did? Well, if I double click on entry, notice I actually have two foreign keys and I have therefore three indexes, one for my primary key and one each for my foreign keys. So this is where having that background information on your how to set up and create databases, those normal forms all becomes really powerful. Now I can see that in place here and know how to work with this. I can go up here just a little bit further up of my table entry, look at data, and I can see other pieces of information in here as well. So now I get a chance to kind of take a look at what was this information here. Finally, I have a query tab, and this is where I can write my SQL statements. So if I need to put out a SQL statement to query this information and ask it, use that data query language, I can do that here. So this is just a real simple way of how we're gonna be using Heidi SQL in order to interface with MySQL to go through this series of videos. Hopefully you liked this video and got a chance to see how to use Heidi SQL, set it up and configure it, as well as how to use it at a very high level. We're gonna be using this throughout the rest of the series, so keep an eye out for that. Our next video is coming up, and we're gonna look at how do we start creating databases using something like Heidi SQL.